Today, I've come to visit a very special farm project. It's located right in the heart of vibrant suburban Fremantle. It's been built on what was an old bowling club, and it's located right between the Swan River and Port Beach. The site was formerly a Chinese market garden in the 1920s and has been running as a farm since 2016. Though it's evolved according to the needs of the local community. <laughs> I'm here with farm manager Amy, who's a super skilled farmer and is maximising production out of this small space. So Amy, how has this space grown into what it is today? So the, the long history, of course, we're here on Wajaknunga Bucha, so Aboriginal land. And then after colonisation, it was used as a market garden. And then in time, it turned into a, a bowling club and it's been a, a futsal and tennis club. It's had lots of sport. Uh, then it was converted into what you see today. When we started this project three years ago, the sand was, it was virtually beach sand where less than a kilometre from the beach, so we didn't have really much to work with. So adding in that compost, which we make ourselves now, and then we were adding in, you know, pretty substantial amounts of nutrients in the form of blood and bone and organic inputs to really just get the veggies out as quickly as we could. We're really up and running now. It's grown from the love and input of the community. So we've got an amazing team of volunteers who are really dedicated and, and now are really skilled gardeners. So they come along and um, help grow the veggies. It's about a third of an acre, so we've got 81 um, 10 metre garden beds. And we grow about 30 different varieties of veggies, so it's not like a normal market garden where you might focus on, you know, four or five kinds of veggies. We grow as much a variety as we can for our members. It means that when people come to pick their veggies, they can look around and choose something that they want to cook that day, and they've got a bit more choice when they come. Yeah. So what are some of the crops that you're growing successfully at the moment? Uh, our garlic has been really great, so that's a few months off harvesting. Uh, we've got Brussels sprouts, we've got carrots, broccoli has been really good, parsnips, um, and we're growing a cover crop which is here to kind of uh, feed the soil as we go. As far as memberships to the farm go, it's pretty popular. There are 200 picking members and a wait list of over 130 people who are wanting to get on the list. So you're at member capacity, you've got a waiting list, you've yep. got a model that lets volunteers contribute. How's it all come together like this? Oh, look, I think people just love the idea of local organic veggies right on their doorstep. So they come down, they pick their veggies, they see it all happening and they get that experience of seeing the food grow and how we grow it and our challenges and our successes. And you just don't get that at a supermarket. Yeah, it's pretty special. Wow, now I can see a little bit of rain moving in. Shall we stop for a cuppa? No, we've got jobs to do, Costa. So jobs first, cuppa later. Let's go. I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mary, we've got a new volunteer. Ready for service. Costa, oh, hello. <laughs> the community and volunteers are certainly the reason for the success of the farm. But it seems that not just the garden is benefiting. These volunteers are getting so much more. Helen, what do you love about coming to the farm? I just love walking through that gate costa and seeing the sea of green and the soil that's looking so rich and productive and just these wonderful people that are here. So I've sold a unit and bought a block of land and developing the soil and working on a veggie garden. So, And I hope to be able to then provide veggies to my neighbours. I retired just before COVID. I, not, actually, I'm not retired. This is just the happiest workplace I've ever been. All this work has got me pretty hungry. And what's better than using what you grow to cook up something delicious? Oh, yum. Uh, that's fresh. That is fresh. It's as fresh as that, you get That it. asparagus is what I picked 20 minutes ago. Yep. Oh. What is it that you love about the farm? It's the families, seeing young children harvesting food for the first time. The little ones who don't know how to harvest a carrot or harvest a broccoli, getting in there, getting their hands dirty with mum and dad, learning together. It's, it's bringing people together. How do you feel when you're here? Happy. Yep. You walk through the gate and uh, this, is, this is our family, our other family. What do you love about the farm, John? 
it's a happy place, um, a very good manager, and, uh, and you see, over a short period of time, rapid growth in vegetables, and it's, it's really good. Yeah. Good to see oh, you no. found the place, mate. Oh. Your directions were perfect. I swear Costa would sniff out a strawberry a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I reckon I'm just a little bit early on these. Is he working hard? He is, yeah. Well, I'll leave you to it. I'm going to go check out the crops. No worries. The idea for this social farming enterprise was the brainchild of Renee Gardner. What was the original vision for the project? The whole idea of the farm was to help people that weren't feeling so good in terms of their mental health and well-being and to, to get them out into nature, into community and growing food. Um, as you grow food, you grow within yourself and COVID has shown us how much places like this are vital for our well-being and um, community resilience and having somewhere to come when times feel really challenging. And is that focus on giving people a chance to connect to gardens and spend time growing food for the mental health benefits still as much of a focus as it was initially? I think it's um, an ancillary focus. You know, you come here by osmosis, you get that feeling of, of being connected into the space, connecting with other people, uh, and you can't help but feel good when you're at the farm. What's it like to come back as the founder to see the farm flourishing like it is? It's so amazing. There's so much love in the place. It's thriving, you know, it's a real reflection of everyone's input over the, the years and the iterations to get to where it is now. And um, I'm very proud and very humbled at the same time. And as the veggies flourish, so does the garden in its evolution. Sophie, I've had my eye on this patch all day. What's its history? It used to be just a big, long sand pit with massive rocks, big as your head, that kind of thing. But what we started to do was just get the flowers in, really, because we wanted to get the bees in and the biodiversity. Has it made a difference? Massive difference, yeah. And not just to the garden, but to the people walking past, you know, the community, the flowers started to bring them in and conversation started through the garden. It's bringing people in. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. How do the children respond? The kids are great. You know, Saturdays, school's out, they come down from this big to this pig. Um, I get down to their level. I worked out that the kids, you know, they, they're quite shy, especially the little ones. So I started counting flowers and I'm teaching them how to pick flowers. So one, two, and also teaching them how to smell the herbs. So teaching them how to crush the herbs up, smell deeply. And yeah, it's beautiful. And it's teaching them mental health stuff, you know. It's teaching them that they can come down to the garden, have a yarn, have a play, get amongst it, and it makes you feel good. So it's great. It's like, it's like a, heart of, a heart of gold in the community. It's beautiful. A heart of gold and a hug. Yeah. You know, the welcome I've received from the community here today at the farm has been overwhelming. Thanks for the tip off. It's been incredibly special. Well, there's no doubt you've had a chance to see one of the best community led projects in Fremantle and kudos to everyone involved. Wouldn't it be great to see more of these like this? Yes. Definitely. Oh my gosh.